Alrighty, guys and gals. Back wires and back roads here, obviously. So, Wavy and I are finally <laughs> heading out on the, the trip, the Beagle Barge Beagle Adventure, leaving early in the morning. And I have been thinking about how to talk about, you know, the, you know, what it takes to get to this point. Now, a lot of you guys will already know this, you know, it's, but let me just be another person to kind of, <clears throat> you know, tell it like it is and without, you know, complaining because I'm not complaining, but it has been a ton of work. It has been, I mean, you know, what do you call work, right? You know, some people have real jobs. Some people have real problems. I try to tell myself that all the time, but I have this summer, basically whenever I haven't had videos up, I have been working in one way, shape, or form on making this trip happen. Whether it be getting the, the Beagle Barge ready to, to go or making the money <coughs> to fund the trip, you know, to take the winter off, so to speak, or, you know, fixing my truck or, you know, it, it, all roads this summer, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, <laughs> we're out for a walk right now, all roads have been leading to making this trip happen. It has been a ton of work and, and I'm, I'm partially sharing this with you guys, anyone that's interested, so that you know what you're getting into. I get contacted by quite a few people that, you know, will ask questions, you know, about uh, building a boat or taking the time off or how to make it happen. And, and I, I'm going to try to address it uh, pretty much on this entire trip is there's a lot that goes into uh, making a trip like the Great Loop, which we're attempting to do um, on this fall and winter and next spring, <coughs> you know, God willing. <coughs> I've also been sick for the past week, too. <laughs> I haven't been talking about that much, but the latest bio plagues got, got me. But anyways, uh, it there's a lot that goes into it. Um, yeah, you guys, I've been keeping you somewhat posted on uh, the, the Beagle Barge build and, you know, building the doors and and the heaters and the building the, you know, it's in many ways, I, I, let's just say this, there's this, there's a scene in, I'm, a, I'm an old school Star Trek fan and I think it's the Wrath of Khan, the second uh, Star Trek movie where they built the Genesis. It's this bomb that like you you deploy on a on a supposedly dead planet and it terraforms it and the the people that built it the scientists they 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 say you know can we cram any more into this unit and and the guy says uh who would want to you know it's like that's how i feel about building this boat i could build another boat or let's just say build up another boat i obviously didn't build this boat entirely from scratch some people have and i commend them for it and honestly i don't know how you've done it um, but I, I've, I've taken this boat and I've completely refurbished it and it has been a huge undertaking, you know, and people have told me that, well, if you just didn't, you know, do such a quote unquote good job or, you know, make it too fancy or, you know, all the things I've done to it, it would have been a lot less work and that's true. But I'll tell you, my thoughts and goals are that this will be the last, uh, shanty boat that I'll ever build. I hope to have it, well, until the day I die, 20, 30 years from now, on an average lifespan, right? So, I, I don't wanna build another one. It is a ton of work, guys. So, in one way, I'll say that anybody who's thinking about, you know, building a boat, and a shanty boat, let's just keep it in the, in the general vicinity of, you know, building like a shanty boat style boat, it's gonna, it, I guess it doesn't have to be a lot of work. You can build a, a true shanty boat out of just stuff you find around. But if you're going to do a good job on it, uh, something's going to last. Something's going to be comfortable, functional. It's going to be a big undertaking. And you need to be prepared for that. It's basically taken me three summers of all my spare time, you know, in between obviously taking other adventures and stuff that you've seen on our channel here but most of my 
spare time has been spent one way, shape or form in getting the Beagle Barge ready to go on this trip. I, I, I wouldn't even begin to know how to calculate the time and the hours. I can give you a ballpark idea on money. Wavy's doing her thing. She's gonna do her poop and pee in. I gotta stop here. We'll just stop. We're in, we're in beautiful Washburn, Wisconsin right now in fall. It's beautiful. The weather's turning quick. Uh, I would say, because I know people are going to ask me this, and I will get, I will try to come up with a more precise figure of how much money I have spent on the Beagle Barge. Uh, you know, uh, uh, well, you know, from beginning to end, buying it and outfitting it. But I, I'll, I, my my ballpark figure, without thinking too much about it, is probably about twenty thousand dollars, and that's that's deploying every money-saving, frugal trick that I know how to do. Uh, you know, like the motor that's on the back, uh, the Yamaha 60 horse high thrust, which is a great motor, great, a great uh, choice for that. You know, it's the ideal motor for that boat in many ways. But I, well, I had to buy a, a pontoon boat that that motor was on. I got a good deal on it. I had to go drive, you know, several hour round trip to go get it. I pulled the motor off, and then I resold the the pontoon boat and the trailer to recoup most of my money. And so, you know, this is how I've been able to do it without, you know, uh, it's deceptive on that twenty thousand dollar figure is deceptive in a way because if you do it, you know, in steps and you do it like I'm describing it, maybe I'll make, try to make a more detailed video sometime about this. Is uh, you know, you're going to be paying full price and I just can't afford to pay full price. I might sometimes be able to pay full price up front, but I have to recoup my money in other ways. Like, you know, sell the pontoon boat that it came on or sell the trailer. And so, you know, that's one example, um, you know, finding, uh, cedar tongue and groove, uh, which are seconds, you know, the, the, all the wood you've seen on the inside of the boat <clears throat> are seconds. They're, they're, um, <clears throat> you know, wood that, that, that the, person that made it can't, you know, wouldn't sell as an A grade, you know, it's a B grade, you know, if that, you know, I had to chop it all up and I got a better deal at it, you know, and, and so things like that, you know, finding good deals on just about every component that'll go into building the ultimate shanty boat. And that's what I've tried to do. This is the last boat I want to build. And, you know, who knows, I may be looking back on this five years from now and saying, <laughs> he thought this was the last build, he, build he's ever going to build. But <laughs> you ask me right now, I'm not taking this project on again. I want to go out. I want to have some adventures. I want to go reap the rewards of my hard work. Okay. So I, I, another thing I would say to folks is um, if you can, if this is your style, if you don't need a real personalized boat, uh, meaning, you know, you don't want to, it doesn't mean too much to you to kind of look at it and stand back on it and say, I did this and I did that. Some people are like that. Some people aren't. Some people, you know, can buy a, a commercially built boat ready to go, you know, like a Ranger Tug or something like that. And I, I love Ranger Tugs, don't get me wrong, I take one. I've almost bought one. I've had, you've seen me, I've had several boats. My Vagabond's a good example. I love that boat, but I didn't have much to do with building it. You know, somebody far more uh, skilled than I built that boat, and it came into my life. Thank you. I appreciate it. <clears throat> if, if you... If you want to bypass everything I'm describing, <clears throat> all the hard work that goes into kind of making a trip like this happen, just go out and buy a boat. And there are plenty. I'll try to make another video sometime this winter. I ho hopefully have a plenty of time to do stuff like this. Um, once the trip gets underway, there are trailable house boats. There are trailable trawlers. You know, there are boats in the general vicinity, the general wet realm of what we're talking about. Uh, out there to be bought and to be had and they're going to cost you i mean these days they've gone up they have doubled in price in the past two or three years it's just sad but true but if you got the money and let's say you're retired let's say you're 50 60 70 years old or more and you're kind of wanting to do this you know as your as your golden year adventure golden years i should say um it's probably best to just go out and buy one seriously you don't want to put three summers of i have i don't have a quote-unquote real job I have, you know, 
five, six, you know, <laughs> unofficial jobs that in many ways is even harder than having a quote unquote real job. But nonetheless, you know, I, I have more flexibility in my schedule and it's still taken me three solid summers to make this, this, this boat, uh, ready to go. So in the way I've done it, you know, but in a, on a budget, <laughs> if I, if I was buying everything on the open market and I didn't have time to kind of trade back into the project to make it cheaper, that $20,000 quote would probably be closer to 30. I probably have saved myself, you know, $10,000 in investing time instead of money. So it's always time and money. It always comes down to that. That's just the, the, it's the, what is, what is that? That's just, it's just reality. That's just reality. So anyways, guys, this is a little supplemental. I, I, I can tell in the first minute of my ranting that I put this on the backup channel. Thank you. I mean, anything goes on this side of the channel. You know, you won't see this kind of stuff, hopefully. If you ever do over on Backwaters, then, uh, you know, ping me. You're slipping, buddy. <laughs> Someone's going to kind of put you in check. I will not put stuff like this over on the main channel. But if you're over here, thank you. Uh, I'm glad you found our little, you know, backup channel. I'm going to be making weekly videos over here as well. Um... Uh, anything from walk and talks like this to you know wanders and ponders and pontifications in paradise and supplemental behind the scenes type stuff you know it, it really it, it's hard to say what's going to end up over here but but uh i'm going to be making videos it's, it's going to be a cornucopia a a uh, bonanza of videos coming really soon <laughs> i've been so busy you wouldn't believe it and, it, and the next few days is going to be the busiest, the, 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 the opus, what is it, the magnus opus of busy uh, in my life that I've had for a while. I'm going to be getting up at like 5 in the morning. We're going to be heading to the Mississippi River, which is, you know, a couple hundred miles away from where I am now. And we're going to be dropping the boat in the water. I'm not exactly sure even where. I've got it narrowed down to a few places. We're going to turn around here, guys. And then... <laughs> Because it's just me and my beagle, and my beagle's not very helpful. She's cute, but she's not helpful. We are going to be driving the truck and trailer back home, uh, parking it, and then riding the scooter back down to the to the barge, and then loading it. I actually haven't had it on the front of the barge yet. I've done measurements, so I, you know, the the measuring tape never lies, as someone said to me once. But I've never had it up front, um, but it should fit. And then. If everything comes together we're gonna pull up anchor it's gonna be awesome <laughs> and we're gonna start heading down to Mississippi I've been looking at the weather it looks like the next week this is late season by the way if you're watching this you know later you know not in real time this is uh, mid October and no matter how hard I try I have never been able to get out of here before this when I left on the shanty boat beagle adventure it was I still remember it was October 12th which is Five, exactly five years from yesterday so it's October 13th right now and I never can get out of here before this there's just too much to do maybe next year now that all this stuff these little things will be kind of done and I've done this before and it'll be more streamlined <clears throat> you know who knows maybe but then there's always the look you know I don't know if you can see all this but there's all this beautiful all these beautiful fall colors it happened up here in the Northland in late September and pretty much all of October. And it's it's a magical time to be up in this part of the world. And it's I don't necessarily want to rush from it. But there's that pressure. The pressure comes from both sides. <clears throat> there's the pressure of wanting to be in the Northland in the best time of year. No bugs, not too hot, not really too cold. Beautiful fall colors, just, you know... God's paintbrush, you know, is one thing, one way I, I describe it. Gorgeous. Uh, but winter is nipping at your heels. And if you wait too long, it can come in, it'll dump on you. And it gets, well, I'm not, it never, you can always get out of here. If you got a shovel <laughs> and your back is good, you can get out of the Northland any time of year. I've done it. I have shoveled my way out. Uh, via, you know, car, truck, <coughs> motor. I've even ridden a scooter out of on to, uh, out of the UP um, in January. So it all can be done. It's, but 
it gets a lot, it gets exponentially harder the longer you wait for to leave. That's just the reality of northern winters. So, so yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm speaking, <coughs> man, sorry. <laughs> Remember, I've been sick for a while. You know, I'm not from the Northland. Um, and that's, I think, one of the reasons why I appreciate it more than the average local in a way. You know, I grew up in Northern California. We didn't have to put up with, you know, we had some winters, don't get me wrong. Up in the Sierra Nevadas, we got snow and we got, you know, a winter. But it's it's a true four-season part of the world. And the winters are very mild in comparison to the upper Midwest and Superior Line especially. This is a whole different ball of wax up in this part of the world. I call it weather that wants to kill you. And it will. And it does. It kills some people sometimes. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it is, it'll... It's a serious business, it's a serious consideration. And to get out, you know, to get to, uh, and it, it gives you some warnings, but it's not always consistent. Sometimes it, you know, there's been years where it's coming in October and it's dumped, you know, two feet of snow on the place and it never leaves until spring. There's times where it doesn't come until December. It's weird. So this year, it looks like, uh, God is smiling upon my little venture, and if the weather report can be believed, we've got a good, at least, maybe more, you know, they can only really look ahead any sort of accuracy a week, a week and a half in advance, but it looks like next week, you know, I'm, I'm launching this weekend coming up, it's Friday today, uh, next week is supposed to be almost 60 during the day, 40s at night piece of cake wind is moderate it's kind of windy today it's been raining but i think it's just passing through so that gives us plenty of time to kind of get down to the next climate zone which is basically uh iowa illinois southern illinois and then you know hopefully we can get in that little window that just slowly moves south like we accidentally did or with no planning on the shanty boat beagle adventure where we just followed fall the, all the way to Florida. It was amazing. I've, you know, people contact me quite often about the Shanty Boat Beagle adventure. And, you know, that was five years ago. And, there, and I've had to go back and remind myself of things I've said. And, you know, people said, you know, what about, you know, what did you mean about this? I'm like, I didn't even know I said that. I, it's a long time ago. But so I went back recently and I've watched a few videos. And, I, and one thing I noticed is that we were so blessed to basically be following autumn, following fall, and the fall colors all the way to Florida. And we're leaving more or less the same time on this trip. So hopefully that'll happen again. And I can't wait because it's my favorite time of year. It's like having a two or three month long fall. Amazing. Who gets to do that? I feel so lucky. So, okay guys. Obviously, I could just go on and on. I'm excited. A uh, couple more last-minute things. I got to load the scooter on the front of the of the uh, of the barge, of the barge trailer, <clears throat> and I'm going to try to calm down a little bit after giving Wavy the walk here, and we will try to make a proper paced, uh, less frantic <laughs> video, kind of showing you the boat in its 90% completion. Uh, state. There's still some things I want to do to it. Maybe, we'll, well, not maybe. We will work on them this winter. You know, we got solar power. We got AC and DC electricity. I bring in uh, all my tools. And I brought some wood. Plus, there's always driftwood out there to, to utilize. So, this is going to be fun. Man, I'm it hasn't even really set in for me yet. I'm so excited. In many ways, I never believe it until it happens. Until I pull that anchor this weekend, hopefully, God willing, and we start that motor and we start heading south, I won't fully believe that this is happening. This is this is like if it's the coolest thing I have found in this life so far. I, I have not gotten over it yet. I'm not bored by it. I'm not over it. I'm not, you know, desensitized from it. It is still a river trip is is heaven on earth. I don't know how else to describe it, but I will think about ways, different, a hundred different ways 
to say that in the next few months. So, okay, guys, thanks for putting up with us. Thanks for putting up with the Beagle, especially thanks for putting up with me. Uh, we will see you over on Backwaters really soon. Thanks for watching.